Hey everybody, this is John from Code Planet. Uh, coming back with another video about Chrome DevTools. Uh, the last one seemed to do pretty well. Uh, so if there's more stuff you wanna see in particular, let me know in the comments. Today we're gonna be talking about blacklisting with Chrome DevTools, which is a relatively new feature, uh, but one that I find really useful. Uh, so like a high level overview is while you're doing step through debugging, uh, oftentimes when you're looking at stack traces, you'll see all of these like core libraries like jQuery or something like that in your stack trace. Uh, <clears throat> and you can be relatively sure that whatever bug you're looking for uh, doesn't take place in one of those core libraries. So blacklisting allows you to do just that and blacklist some of these files so that everything else you do in Chrome DevTools will just ignore them. Uh, so to get started, let's like make a little sample project here. We can do this together. So. Uh, I'll go into the terminal and I'll make a new folder called blacklist and I'll cd into there. Uh, so we just got this empty folder. Uh, so I'll make like an index.html file and I'm just going to go with, I found like a minute ago, this very, very boilerplate uh, <clears throat> HTML5 boilerplate code here. So uh, I'm just going to paste that in and I'm just going to get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need. So we're not going to do this stuff for now. Don't have a style sheet. Uh, we'll just make the title blacklist. We don't need this body class, and we don't need this h1. Okay, so we just got this super basic site here, um, and maybe we can put just like one thing in it, like a uh, maybe an anchor tag or something like that. Um, and it'll just go nowhere, and it'll just say click me. Okay, so we've got this thing. We can go ahead and open it up, and we just have this anchor tag that goes nowhere when you click it. Um, so let's add a few libraries. Uh, the first one I'm gonna add is just jQuery at code.jQuery.com. I'm just gonna grab their jQuery 2X version, the minified. Uh, so I'll copy that. I'm gonna make a new directory called scripts, and then I'm gonna put a file in there called like jQuery.js. Uh, and this will probably take a second to paste in. <clears throat> All right, let's see. There we go. All right, so we've got this jQuery file now. And then I'm also gonna add one more just to kind of show how useful it can be. So we'll use underscore.js too, um, which is a great functional library. I should probably do a separate video on underscore, but it's a really cool library. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab the production version of this. Same deal here, it's just some minified code. Go back here, vim scripts uh, underscore.js. Uh, and this one will also probably take a second to paste in. Oh, it looks like one a lot faster. That's great. Okay, so we've got these two, an index file, a scripts folder, and then inside the scripts, we've got these two files here. Uh, and then we'll, like, we'll make one more that we're going to use in a minute, and we'll just call that script.js. That's where we'll put our code. So I'm going to go ahead and open this index file. We've got our anchor tag in here, and I'm just going to start adding in these scripts now. So we've got one script, which is scripts.jquery.js. Uh, and then we've got another one that's the same, except it's underscore.js. And then we've got another one, and that one is script.js. And then real quick, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and close these tabs. So close the jQuery one, close the underscore one, close the boilerplate that I took. Uh, I'm going to refresh this page, and I'm going to open the element inspector with command-alt-i, or command-option-i. I'm going to look in the console, make sure there's no 404s that I'm loading my scripts correctly. Um, although this one does say that it failed. Oh, that's just the uh, source map file, so that's fine. So we've got our scripts in here now. Um, so let's go into our script uh, and let's make like a little, I guess kind of like a contrived example. Um, so we'll just do like, a, like a, a listener on that anchor and we'll listen for a click event and then we'll just throw a function here and then that function, I guess just for right now, we'll just do something like console log high, something like that. Uh, so we'll go back to the web, open up our element inspector, go to console, and then we'll click the link and we see, let me make that a little bit bigger if I can, we can see high in there. So every time we click it, it'll do another increment here. Okay, so now let's, now we've got, if we put back here, we've got jQuery, um, and we're not really using underscore yet. Uh, so let's do, this will get, pretty contrived here, but uh, let's go and we'll make like an array and that'll just have like these three numbers in it, something like that, one, two, and three. And then, so when a link gets clicked on, we'll use the underscores uh, each method and we'll iterate through that array. And then we will throw this in callback function, which will take in the number from the array, the current one that it's on. 
and now here we'll console log uh, number, something like that. And so as long as I wrote this right, we should, every time we click the link, it should console log one and then two and then three. Uh, so let's go back over here and refresh and then console log. Okay, there we go. So it's one, two, and three. So that example aside, let's say now this is an app that you're working on and you're trying to figure out how these like one, two, and three are coming to the page, let's say. So one thing that you can do is you can, you know, you see that they're coming out of the console and you see that they're coming from script.js. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click it, which will take us into our sources panel up here. Uh, and we can see it's coming from this console log, but I kind of want to know how we get there, right? So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a breakpoint in here uh, just by clicking on the number of the line. And then I'm going to go back to our page. Let me see if I can make that a little bigger too. And I'm going to click on the click me and bam, we hit our breakpoint. So that's great. Uh, and then here's what I'm talking about, and I'm sure if you're working on a production app, you've seen this much, much hairier. Um, but you can see this call stack over here where my mouse is. Uh, but the problem is there's a bunch of kind of cruft in there. Like we see, you know, this one's pretty easy. You can see that script is here and script is here. But it's actually a lot more difficult to see uh, in a bigger app because you've got all these like calls to underscore, calls to jQuery chances are the specific application logic isn't coming from those. So the thing that you can do that's really neat is you can right click on one of these sources over here and you can black box the script, uh, which is really nice. Um, so we'll black box that one and then we'll go down to jQuery and we will black box that one. Um, cool. So now we've got those hidden. Um, they, they're grayed out for now, but I think if I step through, yeah, okay, so from now on, every time we hit this console log, um, you can see that it says here three stack frames are hidden, they're black boxed, with the option to show them. But what's really great is now that we've black boxed all of our uh, scripts, we can just see the actual steps in our code uh, that are calling this. So the console log here, and then one stack trace back comes from this each here. Uh, and if we wanted to show uh, the stack frames over here, we can go a little bit further and we can see that, you know, jQuery.js dispatched it or something like that. Um, but chances are we aren't going to want to see that. We want to see just our application code. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, I do that for all of my projects. Uh, just go through, you know, open up a call stack or look in the sources panel, however you want to do it. Um, and just go through and like right click and black box all of your core libraries like Angular, Backbone, jQuery, uh, you know, anything that you're using that you're pretty sure you never want to actually step through. You know, like we never want to step through this minified jQuery code over here because it's going to do almost no good. Whereas looking at our application code is really helpful. Uh, so yeah, hope that helped. Uh, let me know what you all want to see next.